Well, I'm a man, and a man should be able to stand on his own two feet, make his own way, like you did. I mean, a man does it for himself. I mean, it's a hard road to travel, but after you travel it and you look back on what you accomplished, you can say, I did that. I'm a man. <laughs> That's the biggest load of bull I've heard since I left the farm. <laughs> Nobody does anything without help, Will. People open doors for me, and I worked hard to open doors for you. It doesn't make you any less of a man to walk through them. Did you ask your wife to calm down? Calm yourself, Barney Fife. <laughs> Vivian, please. Now, officers, I'm sure we can clear this whole matter up quite easily. Could you please sit down? We're busy now. Oh, honey, we're about to get very busy. <laughs> sit down. Hey! You don't talk to my wife like that. Now, wait a minute, buddy. Who the hell do you think you're talking to? Who the hell do you think you're talking to? What's going on here? Can I help you, sir? I'm Henry Firth. Good news, Mr. Firth. Your car is safe and sound, and we've got the perpetrators. Those aren't the perpetrators. Those are my partner's son and nephew. Partner? Legal partner. And I've got a few questions for you. When you got this alleged confession from these two young men, did they have a lawyer present? No because I'm their lawyer. Did you notify their parents? No, because we're their parents. So, officer, don't tell us to wait, and don't tell us to sit down. Just open that damn cell and let those two boys out of there, or I'm gonna tie this place up with so much litigation that your grandchildren are gonna need lawyers. <laughs> I wish I could have seen those kids' expressions. Sounds like you left them dancing in your dust. Philip, do you think I'm old? Of course not. Do you think I'm pretty? Woman, look in that mirror and tell me what you see. I don't know. Well, let me tell you. I see every great thing a man could possibly want in a woman. Eyes so dark and deep a man could get lost in them. Skin color of mahogany, soft as satin, a body fit for a goddess. Look how beautiful you are. Look. Look how beautiful you are. Why do you think I make it home by 6 o'clock every night? <laughs> I thought it was for those little cheese things Jeffrey makes. <laughs> <laughs> Ernie, my yeah. nephew Will. Yeah, from Philly, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, Moose here told me all about you. Moose? Yeah, yeah. Back in the day, your uncle's nickname was Moose. <laughs> wow. What a coincidence, because Bullwinkle's nickname is Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Look, um, Uncle Phil, this is, this is not really your concern. You know, it's about me. It's not about you. So don't even worry about it, all right? How can you say that? We are leaving town in a day, and you don't have a place to live. Why did you lie? I mean, we, we're sitting around the table and every, everybody talking about all these great lives and these new things they're doing. You know, and I didn't want you to say, hey, there's my nephew. Yeah, he's still living in my pool house. I mean, I didn't want you to think that all these years that I've been out here just ain't worth nothing. You know, that you've just been wasting your time with me. Look, Uncle Phil, I just, I just don't want you to think that I'm that same stupid kid I was when I first moved out here. How could you possibly believe that that's what I'd be thinking? Look at you. You're moving out on your own. You're going to finish college in a year. You're becoming a man. A man I'm damn proud of. I just don't want your last memory of me to be no better than the first one. You have no idea what my first memory of you is. I remember a kid loaded with all the potential in the world. Now I see a person on the verge of realizing that potential. A lot of good times in this house, huh? Lifetime's worth.
You okay? Yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm cool, I'm cool, Uncle Phil. You know, it was just when I first came out here, you know, I was a relative. I mean, for the past six years, like, we, we've been family. <laughs> I just don't want to go back to being just a relative again. I mean, I live without a father and without brothers and sisters and all of that. I like this life better. I want you to call me on Sundays, too, you know, when you're calling all your other kids. And <laughs> Look, um, I love you, Uncle Phil, and I, I just don't want to lose you, you know, any of you. You're not going to lose us. You are my son, Will. End of story. You just better be sure that your butt is by a phone on Sunday. Got it. I'm sorry, Will. <laughs> you know what? Actually, this works out better for me. You know, the Slimmies of Summer come to class wearing next to nothing. You know what I'm Will, saying? Will, it's all right to be angry. Hey, why should I be mad? I'm saying, at least he said goodbye this time. I just wish I hadn't wasted my money buying this stupid present. I'm sorry. I, you know, if there was something that I hey, could Hey, you know do. what? You ain't got to do no, nothing, Uncle Phil. Hey, you know, ain't like I'm still five years old, you know? Ain't like I'm going to be sitting up every night asking my mom, when's daddy coming home, you know? Who needs him? Hey, he wasn't there to teach me how to shoot my first basket, but I learned, didn't I? Hey, I got pretty damn good at it, too, didn't I, yeah, Uncle Phil? Did. Got through my first day without him, right? Mm. I learned how to drive. I learned how to shave. I learned how to fight without him. I had 14 great birthdays without him. He never even sent me a damn card. To hell with him! I ain't need him then, and I don't need him now. Will. Will. Now, you know what, Uncle Phil? I'm going to get through college without him. I'm going to get a great job without him. I'm going to marry me a beautiful honey, and I'm going to have me a whole bunch of kids. I'm going to be a better father than he ever was. And I sure as hell don't need him for that, because ain't a damn thing he could ever teach me about how to love my kids. How come he don't want me, man? <laughs> <laughs> 